Okay, good evening, everyone. Happy Tuesday and welcome to Dreamstruck. We are so excited that you're here. We know that it's summertime, kids are out of school. Um, we are all, well, some kids are out of school, right? We're all trying to figure out our routines, um, but we're making the magic happen because we're here right now. One of the things that I would love to ask you to do, if you don't mind, is just put a quick little reminder on your team pages that Dreamstruck is starting now. There's so many people I know that are interested in learning more about VIP groups um, and want to be here, but like many of us are forgetful. So sometimes it just takes that one little post to say, ah, I'm supposed to be somewhere. <laughs> so, okay, we're going to go ahead and open up with our panelists. The question of the evening um, is in preparation for Sensi Family Reunion. That's not what tonight's topic is about, but we do want to open up with an icebreaker because we have about a month and some change left um, to register for $11 for our largest event of the year. And so <clears throat> I would like to go around to the panelists and maybe in about two and a half minutes or, or less, can you let us know what your favorite SFR location was and why? Maybe it was a guest speaker. Maybe it was um, a product release. Um, but which SFR location um, and why has been your favorite to date? All right. So any of the panelists can unmute yourselves and let's go ahead and break the ice. Oh my gosh, that is so hard. Um, because each each location, every something was special about each place, and. For um, the ones that kind of stand out to me, I loved Nashville, Tennessee, because we got to go to the Grand Ole Opry, and that was pretty special. Um, but I remember it being super hot and uncomfortable. Like it just scorching hot, beating down, you felt sticky all day. I didn't like that part. But the Grand Ole, or the um, Opryland Resort, where we had SFR, was absolutely stunning. Um, expensive, you know, even sharing a room with four people you were still paying like two hundred dollars two hundred fifty dollars for the four nights you were there um but worth it for the experience so i love that but um you know california was a good one and austin i really loved the last two because um just different reasons i think it was more i had more team members there like just my group was larger i had more people in my group attending and then we got to do things together i mean obviously california was disneyland and i had always wanted to go to california so i got to do that for the first time and austin just had amazing food and nightlife like it just felt like a party every night so i loved it for that that was those were my top three i'll give you my those are my top three sorry <laughs> That's good. That's good. I love it. And also, if you are watching, tuning in to Dreamstruck and you have been to um, a Sensi family reunion, go ahead and drop it in the chat. We would love to communicate with you all as well to find out what your favorite location was and also why. And we will all try to chime in where we where we can. Okay. Um, who else is on? I think I may have heard Amber. Um, if you, if the next panelist would like to unmute yourself and let us know. I, I saw Dorothy too. Hey, yeah, I'm here. Happy Tuesday, everybody. That's a really hard question. I'm with Emily. Like, I'm going to have to go with two. Um, so Anaheim for sure, because my family came with me. Um, Disneyland was part of it. And so that was very memorable, very expensive. So if you're not jumping on $11 streaming registration, like you have no idea how much money you're saving. Um, that was awesome. That was such a fun SFR, especially for the big announcement of the Disney partnership, they blindsided us with that. And I will never forget when they announced it. Of course, since he does everything big, so they announced it. And then out of the woodwork comes these home office people with Mickey. I have chills right now, y'all. What is wrong with me? Uh, Mickey Mouse buddies. And they just started, like, the home office people had the white gloves on and the whole thing. And they started passing down the rows. And everyone's like, we're all just we're like, take it all in that we're part of Disney now and and then we have this gorgeous buddy in our hands and I mean people were crying people were screaming and that was a pivotal point of our company like oh my gosh and now we put himself with that last shop and now we're getting Warner Brothers Harry Potter you guys. <laughs> we are so blessed so there was that 
Um, and then of course Austin, because I'm in Texas, and like I said, Anaheim was expensive to attend. Um, Austin was like a four hour, five hour drive for most of us from where I live. So I had like 26 families there with me and I will never forget we gathered for the group picture, you know, in front of the stage and I handed my camera to someone, my phone to someone. And then I turned around and saw how many of my teenies were there. And again, I'm a little emotional. I started crying. I was like, look what's happening. Like from just starting from just me and then going to so many SFRs alone. And then with like one, two, three, five people to 26. It's just too much. Yes. Memories, so many good memories. I'll stop talking now. <laughs> oh, no, that was really good. I love that recap. It, it, I felt like it was, it seems like it was just yesterday that we were all gathering in Anaheim. Um, so thank you for sharing that, Amber. That's really neat. And Dorothy, yes. I know this is so hard. This is so hard, but what is your top SFR location and why? I would say I've, I've been thinking about it. And so I would say there are two. Um, the fir my first one is my first SFR, which was in Las Vegas. It was a little different then because I didn't know hardly anyone, maybe about five people outside of my team at the time. But I went, um, I roomed with someone I didn't even know. You know, it was just the beginning of me getting out of my comfort zone, you know, way back when. And so, um, and so, but that, but when I sat there at that SFR and I heard the speakers and just everything that I really had no idea, you know, so, some things about Sensi and I learned them at that first SFR, I was just amazed. And I came, I came back and I was telling my husband about everything. And then I think that was really like a huge game changer, um, to really truly hear from Heidi and Orville back then and um, things like that um, for my business. So it was a huge game changer for my business. Um, and then of course, my favorite SFR was Austin. Again, you know, we're in Texas also. And so it was just so much fun because many of our team, member, team members were able to attend that SFR. And so that was the biggest group we had. And um, it was just so much fun getting to know everyone and hanging out and, you know, just, I mean, I just really, I just really enjoyed that. So I can't wait for our next in person. I'm dying over here. <laughs> I know. It looks like the world is starting to open up slowly but surely into a new normal. And every yeah. time I see pictures on social media, whatever it might be, it just really makes me smile. Cause I mean, I'm sorry, Emily, I know you're still kind of going through it in Canada on lockdown. So we, our hearts go out to everyone in Canada, but you're going to get there. <laughs> Excuse me. You're definitely going to get there. Okay. And I think, I don't think Kelly is on yet. If she is, go ahead and unmute yourself. But Kelly and Fred just bought their forever dream home. It, it is gorgeous. Um, it is completely empty. And I have mad respect for her because she messaged all this. She's like, I'm going to try to be there, but we have no furniture and the bed people are coming. So she might jump on later and, um, and chime in. Um, and Carol, Carol's daughter is graduating tonight. Um, and I just went through that and I'm telling you, it's an amazing experience, but um, it kind of doesn't leave a lot of opportunity for time. So uh, anyway, we're still going to have a great night tonight. That's why I love having so many panelists um, and so many different personalities because we still get to keep this party afloat. So um, Debbie is also working full time. She works full time outside of Sensi. So for those of you who are juggling both, um, we have um, SSDs that are doing the same and um, She's really kind of getting kicked in the rear right now, so she may be on a little bit later. Okay, so with that being said, I do want to share my favorite uh, Sensi family reunion. My very first one was Nashville, and um, that one was a really good one because it was at the Gaylord uh, Resort, and I'd never been to a Gaylord, and I was just like, it, it felt like an incentive trip. My jaw just kind of dropped. I knew no one there. I flew by myself. I literally took selfies because that's all I could do. I was by myself. Um, I roomed with three strangers, but I really loved it. Mel Robbins was there that year and she spoke about, um, um, you know, five, four, three, two, one, just going for it and getting past your fears. Um, that, uh, although that was an amazing experience and also being able to go to the Grand Ole Opry where you knew, you know, all these big time performers like Do Dolly, 
Dolly Parton, yeah, that's her name, um, and all these other folks, you know, performed there. We actually had two um, performances just for us Sensi folks. Um, Scotty M McCree, was that his name, Emily? It was Scotty McCreary, and we had Lauren Elena. Yeah, and that's when the low, the road less travel warmer came out. And yeah. I believe Lauren sang that song. That's the title of one of her songs. And um, Heidi actually gifted her with one of those warmers. It was just, it was magical. Um, but that wasn't my favorite one. Very quickly, my absolute favorite one has to be hands down Anaheim. Um, I was listening to Amber and I was like, oh my gosh, right on. Um, the most magical moment for me is when we were sitting in our seats and they announced the partnership with Disney that's something that we dreamt of, but Heidi and Orville always said, guys, that's really, really, really hard. And they had been working on it and just could never land it. We didn't even see it coming. It was a global Sensi family reunion. So people were there from all over the world. I love Mickey Mouse, Goofy, the whole gang. And next thing we knew, it was like an Oprah Winfrey moment, like the Oprah show. You get Mickey, you get a Mickey, you get a Mickey. Everybody gets a Mickey. And it was like the whole room the atmosphere just blew up mickey mouse and you would have thought like dorothy was five years old amber was three emily had to be two because that's how we acted we jumped out of our seats we were hugging onto mickey mouse we were jumping up hugging each other and looking back at it it was really ridiculous but it was our truth it was like our authentic moment um we knew that this was big and it's kind of like exactly what we just experienced with the warner brothers um you know announcement as well it's just that we weren't in person but you guys that's going to be so huge so anyway i wanted to share that the other thing is sensi closed down disneyland for us and i felt like will smith i felt like tom cruise i just felt like a celebrity because i was like who gets disney freaking land shut down for them not us you know, um, in real life, I was like, oh my gosh. And so they have like this red rope and they released the red rope. And again, we felt like we were six years old because we're diving to this space mountain doing somersaults. People like the guests, the cast members were singing and they were singing like they had Sensi and their song. And I was like, this feels like a dream. And that's what our co-CEOs, uh, the owner of our owners of our company really want us to experience outside of SFR, in Sensi Family Reunion, a child of wonder. And that's why I love this business so much is because no matter what's going on in this world, I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic, you know, that's scary. Um, anything can be going on, but it's like we have this corner and we have this space where we can just be free and, and have joy and support one another and just, you know, release everything. And I just... I'm six and a half years into it and I love it. So with all that being said, we just wanted to also put in a plug for those of you who have not put in the $11, the $11 to um, invest in yourself and also invest in the experience. I want to put out a little secret here. I mean, I don't know if it's a secret or not, but with all the announcements that were just made, usually at Sensei Family Reunion, that's where we have all these product reveals. And you really don't want to be watching me at that moment. You don't want to watch me tonight, but you really do not want to be watching any of us during Sensi Family Reunion because you're going to have serious FOMO. Don't know what FOMO is? Ask in the chat or Google it. <laughs> you don't want to have that. So for $11, I mean, it's a steal. Um, if you're working or vacationing, you can, again, for $11, have access to the replay. Um, but there's going to be secrets, there's going to be excitement, there's going to be tears, there's going to be motivation, inspiration. I mean, what, I mean, $11 you get, you can't get to, You get to yeah. see your SSDs look like fools, because we have to <laughs> lip sync to a song. <laughs> it's yes. going to You can it's laugh gonna, at me. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It really is. And so you're going to probably see a few people singing and dancing. And again, it goes back to that childlike wonder. You know, because in the real world, we're paying bills, we're stressed. You're not just, you know, dancing around, lip syncing, right? <laughs> so anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the topic of the evening. I am so excited about this. I know, um, you know, we have a little chat, the panelists, um, and I believe all of us are really excited to talk about VIP groups. Um, and so 
what I want to do, I have so much that I want to say about it, but I want to kind of save it to the last. Um, and so I want to kind of pop over to Amber because earlier this morning, Amber was like, I am so excited about this topic. And so um, whether you're new, there's so much that you can learn today about VIP groups. Um, if you've been an existing consultant for 10 years, there's still so much that you can know because social media is always evolving. So what I want you to do um, is get yourself a little notebook. And when I say little, I, I found this at um, Michael's. It's probably the littlest notebook that I have, but it's so cute. <laughs> get yourself a notebook. If you don't have a notebook, then do like I used to do back in the day, get a, a bill, an envelope, and take some notes on the back of it. But take some notes because there's going to be something that's said tonight that's really going to be profound, that's really going to help you and maybe invigorate your business, okay? So I want to run over to, um, to Amber. And Amber, can you explain what is a VIP group and why is it important? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, a VIP group is just a group on Facebook. Um, so it's going to be where you invite your customers. Don't blindly add people um, because that's happened to all of us and that's not nothing but annoying, um, but you add people as they are your customer. Um, it's it's my favorite place to hang out on social media because it's where me and my customers hang out and chat and see all day long. Um, so it is, your goal is to not be salesy with your VIP group. So, you know, I have my Facebook business page and that's a separate entity that is more salesy. My goal with my VIP group is to be authentic, to be genuine and to be, um, to be relatable with them. So my, my goal is to do a ton of interactive posts. So tomorrow's Wednesday, this is a great one to start with. If you don't have a VIP group, like go ahead and set it up this evening. If you do have one and you're getting crickets, try this tomorrow, wax Wednesday, every single Wednesday, um, take a picture of me changing my wax. Sometimes honestly, I'll just pull an old photo because I'm not feeling like, or maybe honestly, I didn't change my wax on that Wednesday. Um, but post wax Wednesday, what are you warming today? This is what I'm warming. My customers really like when I hashtag the notes so like I think Sunday was coke I also do smelly Sunday uh, Sunday was coconut daiquiri so it was like hashtag coconut milk hashtag I don't even remember what the other notes are but they love that so um but interactive because you want to leave them open-ended you don't want it to just be like hey I'm warming coconut daiquiri you should buy this bar, but you want to leave it with a question. So like, what are you warming today? How, who has tried this? What do you think of this? I love to post polls in my VIP page. So if you haven't tried that feature on your VIP group, try a poll. Um, if I'm trying to decide on a theme to run, uh, to do, like I do monthly scent boxes, you know, I'll post some ideas in a poll and I'll have them vote or I'll ask them, hey guys, I'm stumped for my July box. What are some themes that you think I should do? Another thing that I love doing, I'm big, big, big on upping my Scentsy Club subscribers. So every time I have a Scentsy Club subscription run, I will reach out and thank that person. But I'll also, I have a graphic that I've made for my VIP page that I've put my face on. So if you need help getting your face on a graphic, write this website down. It's remove.bg, remove.bg. All you have to do is upload your photo and it automatically takes the background off. You can slap it on any flyer and that flyer just got so much more powerful. So I post that, I tag the person. Thank you, Meredith, for your Scentsy Club order that ran today. I love how you've locked in your discontinued bars. Get 10% off and use your half price item on a whiff box. You're a smart cookie because that turns what could be a salesy post for Scentsy Club into a bandwagon post. And that's very important. When other people see what others are doing, they're going to be um, much more likely to jump on rather than you just posting Scentsy Club is awesome. Scentsy Club is great. Scentsy Club, you get 10% off, blah, 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 blah. They're like, oh, Meredith actually does Scentsy Club. And this is what she does. And every single time, every single time I have a Scentsy Club subscription run, I do that. Um, and it's been very, very, very helpful for my Scentsy Club following. So along those lines, I'll throw out this tip and then I'll stop and let someone else go, but I could literally talk about VIP pages all day long. Um, 
be consistent in your post. So like I am going to Disney next week. We are extending. I will be gone seven nights. My VIP page will not die, but I will also not be posting while I'm there unless I'm sharing an experience that I got at Disney. So again, bring your life into it. Um, make it more like a blog. Make it more like a blog. Like, hey, I'm, I'm at Disney, Cincy, Incentive Trip look at what they just gave us, whatever, um, because you don't want to be so salsy. You want to incorporate, you want to show them Cincy in your life, um, but be consistent, but don't go overboard. So where I was going with that final tip was post every single day. My recommendation, and you can Google like the Facebook algorithm and high traffic times on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. But personally, what I do is I just post twice per day morning and night, because different people are on Facebook at different times of the day. The only time I'll throw in a third post is if we have an LTO announcement, and because that usually happens in the middle of the day, right? Um, but no more than three posts per day, no fewer than one, because you have to stay consistent without, like, giving them too much. Like, I probably just gave y'all too much and just talked for too long. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Actually, you didn't talk too long. I, I couldn't even mute myself because I'm over here taking notes. That was really good, Amber. Um, thank you for sharing that. And so basically, you know, Amber uh, tossed out some really good things, um, you know, about making sure that consistency is a part of your VIP group that at minimum, seven days a week, you want to have at least one post at minimum one. I am a firm believer of taking a couple of days off. So I'm not asking you to work every single day, but you have the ability to schedule your post as well. So the days that you're off, you still should have continuity going and schedule a post for Saturday and Sunday, or I'm sure, you know, while you're at Disney and or on vacation. <clears throat> um, so thank you for all those tips that you shared. That was really, really, really good. All right. Um, Emily, um, would you like to chime in here um, sure. with some tips? For okay, great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I've, had, I've had my VIP group for a long time. And like anything else, it takes a while as you're building it to get the kind of activity. You, you know, depending on the, the type of people you have in the group, it's not going to be like a team page that has a couple hundred people in it. You know, you really have to bring people out. Um, but you can play games um, in your group, things that sort of entice people to participate. I noticed that whenever I throw out a, hey, um, you know, like I've done Sensi Battleship, I've done, I uh, guess how many like beans in the jar or whatever testers in the jar. And, um, you know, the, the, the person with the correct guess will get a special surprise message from me or whatever, you know, to keep it compliant. And you wouldn't believe the people who are normally quiet on my VIP page who show out. And once those, um, once that happens, it, like Amber was saying, it kind of changes up the algorithm. So once they've been interacting in the group, my group will start showing them postings again. So anything that's going to sort of draw people in and um, get them to participate. Another thing that I do um, quite often is I try to include my VIPs in in their what they want out of their VIP mail. So I used to do, and we've talked about this before um, in past months about how we send thank you mail, happy mail, whatever. Well, I was doing a system that was quite, I mean, it was extensive. I was sending samples, send of the month for three months following a purchase, regardless of how much you spent. And that was fine, except that I needed help to do it. So I, I was paying my sister part-time to, to help me with that and just got to be kind of monotonous and it was expensive. And realistically, I don't know how practical it was because sometimes we didn't find out about certain things until the month was coming. So some people were missing certain flyers, things would sell out before I could even get them in to make samples. So it just didn't work. Um, but people were basically getting a felt sample of the sun of the month with a flyer with whatever special I was running. And that was it. Well, by the time they get it, 
you know, people who got the whiff box, well, they already got that every month. So I had to sort of think about how I wanted to change things up. So I asked them, like Amber mentioned, I did a poll. Actually, I did it last month. I and mean, you wouldn't believe the, the, I actually pinned it as an announcement. So every time people come in, you know, check out the group, they'd see it and they could participate. But I basically asked them, hey, this month's mailers, I want you to pick two things that you want in your, in your um, happy mail uh, packages. And so they picked, I, I gave them options. Um, the things that I was willing to make for samples. So it was, they could pick a scent circle of any of the new fragrances uh, from the summer collection. So it was a choice of four. I said it would be randomized, but you could choose a scent circle, uh, scrub, uh, a wax sample of any one of the scents, um, the washer whiffs. And so like I had 30 people comment that they wanted a scent circle. And then I had like 20 people choose, you know, kind of miscellaneous of other things, but I, a ton of feedback. Now I will say that your VIP group is kind of, it's your hangout. It's your place for your customers. They expect that you're going to talk about Sensi in there because that's what the group is for. However, like Amber said, it's not just to, to spew ads at them all day because if they want to do that, they can just turn on the television. You have to, you know, this is a very personal business. How are you the purple cow? As Teresa said, if you came to my VIP page, what would stand out and make it special? How are you connected to me? If you went to Amber's group or Teresa's group, would there be something special that holds you there? I've had people come to me and uh, they'll see an ad or they'll see a, because I have friends that sell Sensi on different teams. And so I have customers that are also mutual friends. We're all in a small town. You can imagine how that works. So to see, they'll see an ad somewhere, my customers will, and they'll come back to me and they'll say, hey, um, I saw this on someone else's feed. I was just wondering, is this something I can get with you? And I said, oh, of course. So I, I take care of them. Um, that's just how it goes. Sometimes they're going to see it somewhere else first and that's fine. One thing that's really fun that my customers love is Tip Tuesday. So Amber was sharing about Wax Wednesday and that's cute. I love that. Um, coming up with different um, sample combos like the you are you mix them and then doesn't just sell you one bar, it could sell you two. But I like Tip Tuesday, finding alternative ways to use Sensi, whether that's um, you know using the containers as as paint separators for kids, um, you know turning your old warmers into pencil dishes. I actually keep an album on my team page of Tip Tuesday graphics, so at any point in time, my team can come and grab one of those Tip Tuesday things to use as a post on their page. So you could do something like that. Um, and I just try to grab different things, uh, like, um, uh, like what to do with when you spill wax on, on the carpet or on the, on the wall, that's something that comes up a lot. So I try to make sure those are the types of things I share on tip Tuesday. So they can see that I'm bringing practical value to their life with our products, not just constantly trying to, you know, shovel more sensey into their lap. So those are things that help my group to stay really close knit. And it's super fun when everybody starts getting their little goodie pack and they go, Oh, thanks. Em. I'm so happy. Can't wait. And then the people who haven't ordered in a while are seeing these people get their goodie packs and they're like, Oh, oh, I want one. Why didn't I get one of those? And then they go, Oh, what, what do I need to order? And I'm like, well, you don't have to order anything. But I said, it's, if you ordered in the month of June, you got, you know, you, you get that or whatever. And so then they end up placing an order. So it's just, it's just fun. I created a little bit of FOMO and it keeps my customers on their toes wondering what is she going to say next? So that, uh, that's what works for me and my group. I love that. I love that. I love that. And I took some notes too, Emily, um, you know, when you were talking about the purple cow, um, it's kind of like watching TV, <laughs> excuse me, I'm getting over these allergies, but it's kind of like watching TV. You know, when you're flipping through the channel and you're just flipping, 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 and then something's like, Ooh, and you flip back. Like, what was that? That's how you want your VIP group to be. When people are just kind of scrolling through their newsfeed, you want to be able to present something that day that makes someone stop their scroll. So like what Emily was saying, she was selling, she was sharing. If you heard what she was saying, she was sharing, um, you know, the world of Sensi. She wasn't selling. And through the sharing, she, uh, you know, receives sales, right? Because people feel comfortable with Emily because they don't feel like if they go over to her channel that it's going to be, you know, when we watch those infomercials at like two o'clock in the morning and they're like, and you get this water and the water's gonna make you walk on ice or whatever. It's like, oh my God, you know? 
that's where you don't want to be. But Emily's saying, <laughs> I think it's Peter Pop-Up or something, uh, where he has like some special water at two o'clock in the morning and he's just like going crazy. People are popping out of wheelchairs and stuff like that. It's like, that's not the VIP group that I want to be in. I want to be in Emily's VIP group where I feel safe. There's information. I get to learn. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? I want that. And I want to support Emily because she makes me feel comfortable over here. So Emily's talking about being the purple cow. And, you know, you want to stand out. I've been in some VIP groups. And I want to tell you, too, your sponsors, I know you all get so excited and you just want to add everyone to your VIP groups. But at a certain point, as your team is growing, we can't be in everybody's VIP group anymore because uh, it gets overwhelming. But I've been in some where I've seen people post things from like 1922, like George Washington days, like the image of it is so cloudy that I'm like, okay, so that doesn't captivate my attention, right? And so you want to make sure that you stand out, you know, um, use quality content. It's very simplistic. Um, you know, it could be a picture of yourself. It, it could be something informative. It could be you, you know, um, sharing a product that isn't ordinarily talked about, like the wax and warmers. It could be a Scentsy Fresh or Body Collection. So thank you, Emily, for sharing that. That was really, really good insight about being a purple cow and more. And so we're going to hop over to Dorothy. Dorothy, what can you share with us about the VIP group? Okay, so I'm going to share something a little bit different because um, my VIP group is still, I still, I feel like it's still fairly new. I've had it probably for around three years now. And it was a, a game changer whenever I started my VIP group. Um, I felt like, okay, you know, here's a place where the people that want to buy from me are in. Um, but in the beginning, and even things that I continue to do is, constantly challenge myself to add new people to my VIP group and the, the way that I do that are um, in different um, different local groups like some mom groups maybe are you know just local groups that we're in and they have like a work at Wednesday share your business post um, instead of sharing just my website where anyone can go and browse the website and then they leave I always share the link to my VIP group because I want them in there. I want to capture them and get them inside my VIP group. And so I don't share my website on things like that whenever I'm, whenever, wherever I'm able to. I share the link to my VIP group because I want to get them in there. Um, the other thing that I do is, you know, um, I know some of us send our own newsletter out to customers, but I still use the Sensi newsletter also. And so whenever I edit my Sensi newsletter, I'm always including a link to my VIP page because some of those, I'm sorry, y'all. She, her and her brother have been fighting all day and I don't have help don't with this talk one. About me. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> Just be good, okay? <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, so back to the Sensi newsletter, I put the link to my VIP group in there. And I, um, you know, I say, hey, if you aren't already in, in my VIP group, you know, please feel free to join it. If anyone get, um, um, if I get a random PWS order, I, when I reply to thank them and, you know, cause a lot of times they're local and they don't get the buy five, get one free bars. And, you know, I want them to be able to take advantage of that. Yeah. And so I kind of let them know the perks of being local to me. And here's my VIP group link. You know, I share that all over the place as much as I can. Um, and then again, within my VIP group, like everyone else has said, I share my family. They know a lot of, you know, everyone in my VIP group knows I have five kids and you know, kids, my kids are a huge part of my life and my business and everything. And so I'm always sharing stuff about the kids. They love it. They interact. They share things about theirs. Or I have a lot of um, customers in my VIP group who have pets and, you know, their pets are their babies. And so we talk about, you know, animals and the pet products. And, you know, and so just last week, someone was like, I didn't even know you had pet products. And I'm like, where have you been? But yes. And so, you know, then that got a whole conversation going when people didn't even know each other, you know, they were talking talking about the, oh, well, this one is really good. I love this pet product. I have customers that have been sending me pictures of their pet next to the, the uh, what is it? The, shh, Gabby, the, um, the product with uh, that helps for the tangles. Um, and she's like, oh, Theo loves his bottle of da, 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 da. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so precious. But you know, but we really like interact in there. And so um, I think that's important 
um, to share part of yourself or your life or things that are going on within your VIP group because it makes them feel good and it, and it helps you know build that relationship with you and your VIPs. So I'm sorry, y'all. No, so that was so funny and that was so good. The content that you delivered was so good, but I was cracking up laughing when your daughter's like, hey, are you talking about me? <laughs> Because <laughs> sometimes we talk about our kids like, oh, you wouldn't believe she came home with an attitude today, I but know. we can whisper and talk to our friends. But you were like caught in the act. She's, she's like, all, talking about me. <laughs> she's only seven and her and her brother have been going at it today. And so I'm just like super embarrassed. I'm really, really sorry, y'all. No, don't be. Because that's what we were sharing with our teens this week is that that is so relatable. Like my kids right now, they're not in here, but at the top of the morning, you know, they got up, they're eating cereal and they're fighting. And I was like, y'all, you haven't even been awake on this earth for 30 minutes. What is there to fight about? You know? Yeah. So I told them, I was like, we're going to get along or else we're not going to summer camp today. <laughs> but that's the label. And that's what our customers want to see too. When they see us all put together, makeup on point. Yeah, that's beautiful. But for someone that wants to join your team, they're wondering, how can I get that perfect life to where I can go live with no interruptions? It's not always possible. So I love seeing that. And, and okay. even what we just saw with you, that's all of our lives. The only difference is we're on mute. So there's some other kid right now on this panelist that's fighting, throwing something, but we don't see it because we're on mute. So <laughs> no, you're welcome. Thank you for that content. Okay, you guys, um, <clears throat> I want to de deliver my little spiel. And I have to tell you right now, I have to preface this, that I was so scared to do this topic because I do not want to word vomit, but I am so passionate about VIP groups. And it wasn't until we came up with this topic that I realized maybe this is my claim to fame. I've been with Sensi for six and a half years. And whenever someone asks me to speak on their um, team page, I'm like, what the heck? What do I talk about? Because like there's some people that are like party gurus, some people that are like sponsoring, you know, masterminds. I, I got a little bit in every bucket, you know, that brought me to SSD, but there was nothing that I felt like I am just a subject matter expert on. And then this morning I thought, I was like, Teresa, it's the VIP group, it's the VIP group. So, okay, I am going to try to stick with these numbers here. Y'all know I'm so squirrel that I might repeat number five twice. Show me grace. All right, but get ready to take some notes. Number one, VIP group, okay? You wanna know how do I create a VIP group? I wanna tell you this, and I know this isn't the popular answer, but Google it. When you Google literally how to create a Facebook group, something will come up at the very top and it'll be like four or five steps. You know, go to Facebook, click on this image. You can even go to YouTube, you know, if, if you're really challenged like what I was and there's even a visual, I'm a visual learner um, and just type in, you know, the same words and it'll walk you through it. It's super duper easy but be ready to have a name. One of the rules is that in your VIP group, it cannot have the title Sensi in it unless it says independent Sensi consultant. You might be asking why if we're with Sensi. Well, there is a separation. We are contracted by Sensi. We are not employees of Sensi. So that's why we cannot use the, the Sensi um, name of, for each of us. That is um, reserved for home office. Um, and it is considered intellectual property. Now, what you could do is you can title your VIP group, um, Teresa Gosh, Independent Sensi Consultant, but it can't be Teresa's Sensi Fun or Teresa's Sensi Mania. So I just want to preface that with that little um, Sensi standard there. So that way no one gets in trouble and says, well, Emily said, make a Sensi group and that I could put Sensi in. No, she didn't. She didn't say that. Okay, so <laughs> make sure that you're in compliance there. Um, number two, have a theme. Um, I created a theme. Um, I love to laugh. If y'all haven't noticed yet, that was just, I feel like laughter is like an anecdote, whatever is going on pandemic, you know, you might be stressed. You might be suffering through depression. You might have anxiety. Um, your kids might be fighting over a pop tart. Laughter just really is just I don't know, medicine for the soul. So for me, and this has been for me my whole life, when I was a kid, we used to play a game. We didn't have a lot of toys, but we played a game called Make Me Laugh. And we would just line up, do idiotic stuff, and whoever laughed first was it. 
So my theme for my group is laughter. It's called fun and fragrant. My VIP customers know at any time they can come to my group, to my space, and they know that I'm not going to sit up here talking about I'm fighting with my husband. You know, I'm not going to be depressed talking about, you know, um, whatever is going on, like just airing my dirty laundry. We all have dirty laundry, but I'm not airing it on social media. Um, so when we had this pandemic that came about, we were all scared. Um, I was scared, um, literally, legit. Um, there was so much fear. But you know what I did? I took all of that and said, hey, come over. We're going to play Pictionary over here uh, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Bring your families. And I'm going to have the board. My husband's going to help draw. If your husband wants to you know, participate, there's going to be some prizes. Don't have to purchase a dang thing. We're just going to have some fun. Every single day, one of my three posts is a joke. And, and oftentimes it has absolutely zero to do with Sensi. Um, what was it? It a lot of, like I have a lot of moms in my group. I'm a mom, right? Um, and so I noticed that that's kind of my audience. So sometimes it could be about our kids fighting, or it could be about, you know, not a lot of my folks are coffee drinkers. So it could be about not having your coffee. But when I see something and I'm scrolling and I see that it's like, slap your knee funny. I say that and I schedule a post or it goes into my VIP group. And you know what, whether they purchase from me or not, it helps my al algorithm too, because I'll get 50 likes on that post, you know, and then all of a sudden Sensi is like, or uh, Facebook is like, this is a hot spot right here. Come over here. I'm going to show Teresa's VIP group in your feed because it's hot and popping over there. So make sure that you have a theme. My theme is laughter. It's fun and fra fragrant. That may not be your theme. Your theme might be, I don't know what your theme might be. It might be, um, you might be single, you know, and so you might talk about that a little bit in your VIP corner or your, your blog, if you will. Um, you might love animals and all of your friends, you know, may love pets. And so you may have uh, something like a pet corner every day. Whatever it is, have a theme. Sensi is not your theme, okay? Sensi is a company. And as Emily said, we want to stand out in our VIP group. My VIP group stands out because it's just joy and fun, okay? And I love seeing my customers share my posts, whether it's a joke or whatever, okay? So make sure you have a theme. That was number uh, two. Um, number three, we've already talked about, but make sure that you're posting um, at least three times a day. And you might get busy and you may not have scheduled a post, but at minimum once. And try to post around the same time if you can. If you can't, it's okay. I just want you to post. Um, what I do is at nine o'clock in the morning, I share a post. Why? Because don't nobody want to have no notification at three o'clock in the morning, y'all. So make sure that you're reasonable. And usually by nine o'clock, people are at work or people are up and they're making their coffee or whatever. So I try to keep that algorithm going, that rhythm going. So at nine o'clock, I open up with something, you know, a tip of the day or something. Um, and then, you know, midday, I post something about, you know, products. And usually you might say, I'm not as creative and I can't think of things to post. Yes, you can. There are 80 things that you could post. We have over 80 fragrances. So usually my fillers are a fragrance. And it could be, I'm not against flyers. Um, it could be a flyer of a, a fragrance. And then in you know, the comments, you can put the description and you can copy and paste that from your website. But what I really want to teach y'all to do is to be authentic. So when you do have the opportunity to take a picture of yourself or your children um, or your husband or whatever, like this is perfect gentlemen. I might take a picture of that and you might say, I don't have on makeup today. You don't have to. Take a picture of it next to a cactus or do something pretty and just post it. And in the comments, Put the scent description and you will be so shocked how many people are reading that. And they're like, oh my gosh, that has Jasmine in it. I didn't know Luna had Jasmine in it. And I really don't know if it has Jasmine in it. But, but the point is there's always something that you can post every single day. And then by about two o'clock, when people have gotten yelled at by their boss or they don't know if they're going to get work out of work on time, they don't know what they're cooking for dinner. They can tune in a, between like 2 and 2.30 and see a joke of the day. It could be about anything. And usually, again, it's not about Sensi because I don't want to just 
have that group everything just sense the overload okay there's a balance all right um number four um we kind of talked on too make sure that there's something personal in there at some point like we went to fredericksburg texas the other day and i think i shared a post of us you know getting some peaches or whatever and it all ties in because we have an amazing scent called plumeria peach and that might come afterwards, but I want people to get to know my family. It's a private, intimate setting. My group has about 400 and I don't know, 90, 450 um, people in there. Um, and everyone may not see everything that I post, it's okay. Um, but the point is I try to personalize it. My daughter graduated and I might have a post with her cap and gown, just to let them know that this is a family business. And my family, it means so much to me. And their orders impact my family. I thank them all the time. This is a small business. And these are the individuals that you're supporting as well. Okay. Um, we uh, The next one is number five is the algorithm. Again, touched on it a little bit, but I just want to let you know that when you skip out on your VIP group and you're like, you know what? I'm going to Disney next week. I'm just going to shut it down. I'm not going to post. I'm not going to do anything. Well, what happens is Facebook, they don't want, Facebook does not want people to leave their platform. And so what they're not going to do is show your posts. Like when I come back from Disney and I haven't posted for two weeks, and let's say I do post the uh, black raspberry vanilla bar, Facebook is going to be like, ah, we're not showing that in uh, the, um, in everyone's news feed because we don't trust you. We don't trust that you're going to continue sharing. And if you don't continue sharing, people are going to leave the platform and they're going to go to MySpace. Just kidding. They're going to go to um, Instagram and all these other places. Facebook, their goal is, is a business. So they want to keep people on the Facebook platform as long as they can. And if they can do it for 24 hours, they will. So Facebook chooses who sees what, okay? So the algorithm is very important. Um, uh, that was number five. Number six is, for me, one of the things that I do is um, to keep things going outside of those three posts is when I have my orders that are shipping, I, I love to be that purple cow. And so I will go to my workstation and just kind of check if I have a party that's going on or someone out of town that places an order. I love taking my little Ziggy caricature, a little cartoon of myself, and I'm holding a box and I'm like, hey, so-and-so, your order has shipped. And usually like yesterday, I think it was like six or seven customers, their orders shipped. Why do you think I do that on that platform? It helps with the algorithm. I could just leave it to the universe and let them know, well, you know you ordered, so you should have been expecting your order to come, right? Right? But that's not customer service. That's not being a purple cow. And so everyone knows my rhythm, that if they order from me, that I am going to stand out. Yes, they can check their email and see if there's a notification, but they're going to get it notified by Facebook. And guess what that does? It brings them back to my platform because they're like, why did I get tagged? You see, and that helps with the algorithm. So that's very important. Um, also, someone orders online, and then I post a thank you there too, and I tag them because I want to do what I can in a non-aggressive way um, to keep people on my platform and in, in, in my space. Okay, so it's kind of like a portal. Uh, we we have our workstation. I have this blog, if you will, this VIP group where my customers know that they can go there and kind of scroll and get an update on their orders. Okay. I don't know what number I'm on, but I'm thinking I'm on number seven now. Bisley. If you don't know what Bisley is, again, Google it. Google is your best friend. All right. It really is. Google Bisley, but it's an app or you can go to the website. Um, and there's actually a Facebook group just for Sensi. And one of the most, the best things that happened to me, because like many of you, I started getting torn where I was spending too much time with my team and not enough time with my customers. Um, and so I found a Visly code and the Visly code um, has engagement posts for 150 days. I don't know what I'm going to do when I hit 100 and the 150th day, but the Visly code drops a, an engagement post like today. It was so simple. It was Coke or Pepsi. And I can tell you right now, you will be shocked and your jaw would drop. I'm not a Pepsi person. And some of the people that I thought would drink Coke like me drink Pepsi. 
And so you learn about your customers and then they learn about you. It's not enough just to, for Visly to schedule that post, but for me, that has saved me. And the moment that I can catch my break, breath or escape my kids from fighting, I can go to that post and be like, girl, you drink Pepsi? I know you drink Pepsi. Yeah. And I like vanilla Pepsi. It's like, whoa, nothing to do with, with Sensi, you guys. Nothing. But they know that this is a fun space. And so the next post that I might make about our whip box for June, they're going to see it because Facebook is like, Teresa's group is on and popping. Okay. So Visley, number eight is I have a pin post. Um, and that pin post is usually something informative. Like right now it's bring back my bars. It's the menu. I love having a set menu, you guys. When my customers are asking me questions, where can I find this? What's in this? Then that tells me that I'm not on my job. What is your website? That is the worst question that your customer can ever ask you. Your website should be visible in the about section or in a pin post. Now, you don't want to put it everywhere, but have it visible somewhere so you don't go to jail, Facebook jail. Um, and so that pin post, sometimes it's a newsletter for the month, what to expect. Well, we know that we're going to have Chip and Mrs. Potts hitting the scene, right? We know that we're going to have the, um, what's the guy's name from Aladdin, the genie, you know? So anyway, I'll, I have something at the top pinned, but also I'll let them know about Sensi Club. Here's a link to a video. Also, here's a link to my party. Click on the party and if you want to order. Someone wants to order from me at two o'clock in the morning. I want to make sure that my VIP group is set to where they don't have to wake me up at two o'clock. They better not wake me up. And they know how to place an order. That is called a system, okay? Um, the next one, I'm almost done here because I think we just hit number nine. Um, it's going to be number 10. Um, all right, who should not be in your VIP group? Your VIP group shouldn't just be any and everybody. It really shouldn't because that's not a VIP group. And I'm just going to kind of disclose my past with you guys. And it does not leave here, right? Can y'all keep a secret? <laughs> Back in the day, I used to frequent the clubs in DC. Now, I'm not telling y'all to do that. That's not something you should be doing. That's not anything I want my kids doing, but that's my past. And that's what I did. I would go to DC Live and I would go to the Ritz and I would get the little armband on my wrist, you know, um, and I could be with the general public. All right. But if you're special you and you pay a little bit more or if you know the, um, the um, promoter, the club promoter, which you shouldn't know the club promoter. But if you do, I'm not saying I did, you can get into the VIP without paying more. Right. The point is when you get into the VIP lounge, it's away from everybody else. You really do feel very important. Um, it's lavish. It's, um, it's, it's really neat, you know? Um, and if you're not a club person, which you shouldn't be, then let's go to the airport. Maybe that's what I should have said, all right, instead of revealing my past. Let's go to the airport. And we're waiting in line and it's kind of like a flea market because everybody's trying to get through security and everyone's waiting. They're trying to plug in their phones you're at the wrong gate, whatever. Well, there's also VIP lounges. There's VIP lounges for the military exclusive, like the USO lounges. There's, um, I don't know, the diamond, platinum, um, purple genie lounge. So the point is, is it stands out from everyone else. You don't feel like, you, you just feel like a star. You feel like a celebrity. And that's really how your VIP group should be. Now it gets a little convoluted when your VIP customers become your team members. Um, sometimes what I do is I still allow my customers to be in my group, say for about three months or so. And then I let them, if they're, you know, I let them um, fly on their own. You know, I teach them. Um, how to create their own VIP group. The reason being is that you don't want your VIP group uh, to be a business page. So if you're in some another consultant's VIP group and you want to stay in there, the, the, do not go in there and say, what time does this release? Or, you know, um, I shared this with my customers and my customers bought all that. That's not the place for that. That's on the team page, not on the VIP page. Okay. So your VIP group really should be VIP people and, and your customers should be able to look at the list and be like, I'm a VIP. Everybody's not in here. The last thing that I want to say is that your VIP group should always be growing. Okay. 
if you have 50 new team, 50, 50 customers in your VIP group last month, and you end the month of June with the, uh, 50 VIP customers, that's not growth. That's called being stagnant. And you might say, well, how do I grow my VIP group? Okay, whenever I'm posting, I think it was, gosh, um, maybe Dorothy said that she's in networking groups. If you're in networking groups, like I'm in military spouses groups, I there is a link and you can find out what your link is to your VIP group. I always share that. So whether someone purchases from me or not, I always want to include my website and also my VIP group. And sometimes what I do is I might private message someone if they're interested in like, say they want to purchase, um, you know, bring back my bars and I want to have a permanent connection with them. Then I'll message them and say, hey, um, I can make sure that you have free shipping if, um, for, if you join my VIP group, you know. Um, or you can get them just a personal special or, you know, no tax or whatever. And you don't even have to do any of that. Sometimes they just want to go in there anyway. But if you have someone that's kind of hard to get, then you can kind of toss out a personal special like that. Um, but the point that I'm making is if you're doing parties online, home parties, then make sure that you're sharing that. If you're at a home and, you, and there's a party, then ask everyone to go on Facebook and to type in the name of your VIP group and to uh, invite themselves. Um, and maybe they might, you know, I don't know, um, get a, a, a free sample or something. I don't know. But the point is every month your VIP group should be growing, even if it's growth by one. If you have 200 in there and it grows by one. Now, some people might leave your VIP group. Don't take it personal. It's okay. Everyone's not infatuated about Sensi like we are. Um, and that's all right. And sometimes they might move on to another consultant. Like if you have a customer that joins your team, they might take some of their people with them. Do not get offended by that. That is growth. It's growth, you know, and it's just constant um, evolving. Okay. Now, Amber said, thought she talked too much. I know I talked too much just now, but I wanted to share this with you because I am in Amber didn't talk too much, but I did. But anyway, I wanted to share this with you because I'm very passionate about VIP groups. So I'm going to turn this over to either Kelly Rashaw or Debbie Pitts Palmer. I think I saw them. I need to plug in my laptop. But please, we're winding down now, but share anything that you can about VIP groups um, that we haven't touched on yet. Oh, my gosh. You guys are awesome with these VIP groups. Um, only thing I didn't hear that I've... I'm, I'm a baby to the VIP groups. I really started working my VIP groups last year because I lost all of my events. But some of the things that I do in my VIP group, I like to ask for opinions. So I go over there and I ask for opinions, you know, like, uh, and do challenges. I'm, this is something that I'm starting to do now with challenges. And uh, I ask them to challenge me to do something. And because I'm on TikTok now, they like to be entertained. So I'm doing a lot of TikTok videos with products. So I'll take those TikTok videos and put them over in my VIP group and it kind of keeps them smiling. They'll laugh about the things that I put over there. Um, I do something with birthdays. And uh, of course, I share a lot of things with my family over there. We just took a lot of photos. So I've been posting photos over there, my family, uh, my daughter and me. So those are the different things that I've done with my VIP, but I love what I've heard so far. I love that. I love that. And, and the thing is, you can make it very unique. You know, Debbie loves to dance and we love watching her dance and that entertains her audience. So everything that we've shared today, filter, take on what you think could apply to your VIP group, apply to your business. And if there's something like if laughter isn't the cure to your soul, then filter that out. The whole thing is be authentic. That is one of our core values and make sure that you, you stand out with your customers. Um, so Debbie, thank you so much for sharing. And Dorothy actually put something in the chat that I really wanna highlight. She said that it's very important that you invite that you invite people to your VIP group. Never end a party without the, offering that invitation and a link for someone to join. Um, do not spam. Sometimes I see someone new to Sensi that just joined and they'll do a challenge or a contest to say, I wanna see how many people you can invite to the group. 
that is awful. I do not want to be spammed into a group. I might even want the product, but because someone put me somewhere without my permission, um, I, I don't want the product from that person anymore. I will find it somewhere else because I just think that that's kind of rude. Um, so now there's other things that you can do. Sometimes you can do, a. Um, uh, I love for my customers to post their images of their product. So I always give them a thank you card and I ask them to share and tag me in my VIP group or on my timeline. And I love that. And sometimes we might do a vote to say whose dog is the cutest, you know, and see who wins the vote. And sometimes people might bring people in my VIP group that way, but they ask them. They don't just, you know, um, drop them in there. So I'm glad that you mentioned that, Dorothy. Um, okay, so I think that we have um, made it all the way to the hour. Is there anything else that we forgot? I know that we went over so much today. If you don't have a VIP group, um, in the chat, in the comments, can you let us know um, if you do not have a VIP group, but because of tonight, you will have one, put that in the comments um, because we would love for your sponsors to see that or your directors so that way we can uh, support you and cheer you on and we can even talk about it, continue this conversation on our team pages as well. All right, while you're dropping that in the um, chat and in the comments, I just wanted to remind you all about this beauty right here. Um, I meant to show it last week, but isn't this gorgeous? Um, if you love chromatic, I love the name too. Um, drop that in the chat as well. Um, I believe that there was a delay, right? Uh, someone can someone talk about the delay on this warmer for this month? It's a warmer of the month, and I believe that we were waiting for it to arrive. Does anyone have the details yeah. on that? Yeah, it's. Um, I'm trying to recall the details too. It might be in the news. Uh, might be in the news tab, but it was. You can order it, but they're not going to start shipping until mid month. But like they're not they're not showing out of stock or not available to order. It's just they're gonna be delayed in shipping. So if you notice somebody's ordered it and the order seems to be sitting at posted for abnormally long, it's just because we're waiting on those those warmer to, to get to the warehouses. Okay. That, that's what I remember. And the information is on the news tab. Absolutely. I just wanted to make sure that you all are aware of that. That'll help with your PRV. Um, the last thing that I want to say too here is that over the weekend, there was a phenomenal uh, group of leaders that got together and um, um, did some 15 minute trainings. Um, if you type boss up on Facebook, it'll take you to a Facebook page. I know we were talking about groups all today, but it'll take you to a Facebook page. Um, <clears throat> While I was driving today and my kids were fighting, I was listening to Johanna Luna talk about time management. <laughs> so, and it's 15 minutes. So, you know, sometimes we may not have a whole hour, you know, to, to spend listening on training. We might have to break it up, but th this is 15 minutes. And so if there's anyone out there that's struggling, you know, because this is your first summer, kids are home, um, you know, and you're trying to get back to a rhythm. Um, you don't know how to handle summer months because summers are amazing with Sensi. Um, go up to Boss Up, uh, share it on your team pages. If you have a team, share it with them because that 15 minute training a day um, will be amazing. If you love Dreamstruck, I know that you will love uh, Boss Up as well. It's the summer edition and I really am enjoying it. Okay, um, Nina said your launch party group. Yeah, oh, okay, I promise this is it. Nina is a director in uh, Group Purple Explosion and she was talking about how when you have someone new joining, um, you know, create a group or have them create a group, that launch party can be in the group. And next thing you know it, it's the base and the platform for their VIP group. So it's launch party turned VIP group. I personally love VIP groups over business pages. I have both. Um, but I love the control that I have um, with scheduling posts um, and not having like weird this, like some anyone can like your business page, but you kind of have a little bit more control over the atmosphere and your in your group. So I'm a fan of both, but if I had to choose one, it's um, group business uh, or group page all the way. Okay, so anyone else have anything else to say? Um, if not, then I want to see you all go back to your VIP groups. If you haven't posted today yet, the day's not over with. Make a post about those. Bring back my bars. And hopefully maybe Thursday, we might have a special announcement. Yay. <laughs> All right, anyone else have anything else in closing? 
All right. Listen, I hope that you guys had a great evening with us dreaming about VIP groups. We can't wait to see um, here. Um, I'm sorry, here are some of your success stories with your VIP groups. Share it on your team pages um, because it might inspire someone else um, to go to the VIP. So thank you for joining us in our VIP space. I hope that you guys have a great day. Enjoy your week and listen, let's jump into June and have the best June that we've ever had on record. Have a great night, everyone.